The Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Hello and welcome to the Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. I, I always get little um, scratches, things that need to be itched. And one of the questions we ended up asking on today's show was why do the people on the flight attendants on planes insist that you put your window shade up during takeoff and landing? It always annoys me. You have it down there, the sun's coming in too bright, or you're sleeping or something like that, and they wake you up to tell you you've got to put that shade up. It seems so unnecessary. Well, I have the answer. I got the first answer from a text machine, which is not always that reliable. Isn't it so you can wave to your loved ones? <laughs> No, that, well, they wouldn't make that compulsory. Someone texted in and said, the reason that is, is so that if the plane is blown up or burnt, this is a quote, then they can see inside to see if your head's been ripped off or not. BT dubs, I used to work for Air New Zealand as a flight attendant. Wow. I don't think that's the technical answer, so I went onto the internet for a more... Uh, more accurate response. Is this your first mistake? No, it was a good respect. It was good. I think this is a good answer. Okay. You're asked to raise the shade so that in the event of an accident, you can see through the window to help you remain orientated, and you can also see what hazards there are outside the plane, brackets, fire, debris, and such, which would be important during an evacuation. It also serves as a way to let light into the cabin if all power is lost to the plane. So there you have it. That has been solved once and for all. I still need to know why I need to be woken up to put my seat back up because I love sleeping on planes. Just don't put your seat back and then you won't get woken oh, up. but it's so good. We'll do the seat back up one because, for the outro. Yeah, because nobody else can... Okay, you figure the seat back out thing. Enjoy the podcast, guys. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. You know, sometimes you hear of movies and you just think, how... Did this get made? <laughs> Who thought this would be a good idea? Like Sharknado and Sharknado 2. <laughs> did they do a Sharknado 2? No, I'm making Sharknado oh, 2 gosh. right now. Awesome. Some, some people just will do anything for a bit of attention. <laughs> so not as bad as that. You kind of just topped it with the all-time worst list. Sorry. But last night, Chang was telling uh, us that last night he went to see um, a sequel to the movie 300. Now, I haven't seen the movie 300, but I've heard a rumour that it doesn't add, end well for the members of 300. No, at the end of 300, everybody dies. Everybody dies. Spoiler alert, but it's been out for about six years, so you shouldn't be annoyed by that. Everyone dies. Who thought you could make a sequel to that? What's it called? 302? 301. 301. 302 will be the trilogy. I cannot believe there's a sequel to this movie. It makes me less. Physically, <laughs> it makes me physically angry. It's called 300 Rise of an Empire or something like that. They should never make sequels anyway, unless it's like a book series like Twilight or Harry Potter. It doesn't get any better, eh? It doesn't. Like, you're just tainting something that's amazing. The only time where a sequel really turned out well was um, Toy Story 2 was really good. <laughs> that's about the only example I can think of. Not where better than Toy Story 1, though. Hey, what about Terminator What about Terminator 2? Oh, yeah, that was all right. That, yeah. was, that was an interesting yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. There's a couple of arguments. Jurassic Park 2 sucks. But oh, Hangover 2, two and... No, Hangover <laughs> 2 and 3 was shithouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, the, oh, the Matrix movies? How they? I still get angry thinking about The Matrix 2. It's so bad. Because The Matrix 1 was so good. So there's so many movies out at the moment... Yes. ...that exist and are successful, mm. and you just know there's some idiot over there in Hollywood going, we'll make some money just by making a number two to this. So, more than just because, like, the first one was great, don't remake it. <laughs> like, some movies, it doesn't make sense yeah. to make a sequel. you physically is, can't do like, it. You just, like 300. The script finished, yeah. and there was no option for you to make a sequel. Yeah. So, what movies would you never, ever remake? Yeah. Like, what would you not give a sequel to? Let's take some calls in 0800 The Edge. Have you got any ideas? I'm just going to throw one out there right now. Um, Titanic. Yes. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do another one. The boat's down there. I'm you, gonna, I'm, what? They always rumour of doing it, though. It's, it's a genuine rumour. What is Titanic it going to be? Too. The ghosts of Titanic? <laughs> Titanic. Jack comes back for Rose. Titanic 2. The boat floats back up again. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you could do The Notebook, because obviously they, all, they died in the end, but they could do the sequel if they... You know, put on the things they didn't remember because they did have Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Notebook too. The bits we forgot about. <laughs> what Turn about, another page. What about um? What about Schindler's List? No. <laughs> oh no, they could do it. Schindler's List, page two. <laughs> or it could just be Schindler's List. 
tunes into Sh- uh, Schindler's List, tunes into Schindler's Lifts because there's an el- elevator company all around the world that's called Schindler's Lift. That is a great idea for a terrible sequel because Schindler did go into lifts, didn't he? And everyone goes, what are you doing, Schindler, mate? Schindler's Escalators as well. We're getting a lot of feedback because I was saying that 300 shouldn't have a sequel and I'm getting a lot of Sparta heads texting me and going, <laughs> guy, you don't know crap and maybe I don't. I just think it's weird to have a movie that's sequel to a movie that's everyone's <laughs> died in, that's all. We've got uh, some calls on the phone. Oh, 100 The Edge. Kylie, what sequel do you think should never be made? Uh, 10 Things I Hate About You. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, because he's already got 10 Things. Right, it's a brilliant movie and it's got Heath Ledger in it. Oh, also because <laughs> Heath Ledger's dead. Okay, Just because right. it's so perfect already, you can't do any better than that. You actually can't. I love that movie. Ten more things I hate about you. <laughs> Eleven things I hate about you. They I just realised I hate everything about you. The list has got a lot longer, guys, and we have to make another movie. <laughs> they the did movie's make called a, Marriage. They did make a TV series of uh, Ten Things I Hate About You and it was terrible. <laughs> Ken, what movie should ever be remade? Gravity. Oh, yep. I haven't seen Gravity. Why is that? Well, it's, a, it's like a space movie, you know, it's in space, it looks really cool in the ads, and there's like nothing about it. <laughs> right, no one needs to see another two hours of someone Not enough floating space. around. No, she wouldn't be floating around, she'd, be, she'd have more gravity because she'd be on Earth, Yeah, and she'd just be walking around, there's no more gravity than oh. Earth. Gravity 2. Gravity 2. The home of gravity. <laughs> following around, so, it would just be a David Paparazzi I following be, around Sandra Bullock. I love Gravity 1 um, uh, so much that I'd love to see a Gravity 2 where she goes up to space again. They're like, no, don't do it. I've, it's going to end up bad. I've got to find George Clooney. <laughs> He's still out there. <laughs> Lauren, what sequel do you think should never be made? Oh, my God. My all-time favourite movie when I was, like, 14, but terrible as a sequel, Romeo and Juliet. Yes. <laughs> they, could, they couldn't make a sequel of that. They didn't try and make a sequel, did they? Because if Shakespeare didn't write a sequel, don't do a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Someone would have tried. Did also because they both shot themselves. Well, that too, yeah. yeah. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert for Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah. If you um, haven't seen Romeo and Juliet, it's been out for, like, 100 years. <laughs> did Shakespeare even write a sequel to any of his plays? That's a really stupid question. Eh? Someone who knows Shakespeare right now is just going, what is the dumbest thing I've ever heard? <laughs> anyway. Grant, what's your thoughts? Um, basically, Inception 2. I imagine the entire movie you'd be watching this mean thing spin for the entire time, which would just be sucky. Oh, oh, okay. I'm well, glad the only audible word we got was the F word. He's Thank very you, passionate Grant. about Inception Incep- 2, though. Yeah, I think, Inception I- 2 and Fight Club 2, he was saying. Fight, Fight Club 2 wouldn't work? Oh, no way. No. Because obviously now everyone knows about Fight Club. The Fight Club 2, there's even more rules that you didn't know about that Brad Pitt's <laughs> going to tell you about, and it's also a split personality. Man, I'm getting ripped apart. People are going, guy, if you knew the history of Rise of an Empire is a battle after 300. Sorry, yeah. I, just, I just thought it was a bit silly, guys. So and I apologise to all the 300 fans out there. Well, this is what happens when you get your information from Chang also. I'm sure it's a totally adequate... Um, fight movie. Someone said they didn't all die in 300, 299 of them died and one of them went back to tell the story of the brave <laughs> Thank Spartans. you fact checkers of the internet. <laughs> Someone did have a good one though and I said this earlier Mean Girls. They could never do a sequel to Mean Girls even though they're talking about it now but they can't because all the girls are nice now and nice girls would be boring. <laughs> Guy, Sharon and Clint on the urge. There has been some uh, pretty big news, Shaz Dog. You said has, Clint. Uh, Chris Pine, the hot, hot Hollywood actor who was in Star Wars and he played Jack Ryan, a whole lot of movies. He oh, is, that guy, Jack Ryan, yeah. So I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know for a second, but now I know. I've seen Jack Ryan. <laughs> so I don't like you were movies, being rude. I was half asleep. Out of all those movies, the one you've seen is Jack Ryan. Yeah, it was, it was out quite recently. seen Star Trek. Chan got me a free ticket, mate. He's a, he's, a ma- he's a maestro, that dude. Sorry, did I say Star Wars before? Star Trek is the one that I mean. Yeah. I always get them confused. Too many stars. Man, Anywho. a lot of angry people are going to text in about that. Um, Chris Pine is facing charges of alleged drink driving while he was here in New Zealand because Uh-oh. they had their big rap party for Z for Zachariah. Is that right? Zachariah, isn't it? Damn it! Z for Zachariah. I think Z in, um, for Zachariah is a better name, though. But they, <laughs> they were having an after party yeah. last week at the Blue Party in Methven and he drove home afterwards. He had a few beers with his supermodel girlfriend who was on the bloody Sam's and they drove home. He got a routine um, stop de- and he had to blow the bag yeah. and then he had to go get a blood test. No! Over the limit and now Chris Pine on Monday, if you want to do some star watching, is going to be at the Ash Burden Courthouse. Amazing! Imagine if Chris, um, Chris Pine ends up on Police 10 <laughs> That'd be pretty amazing. It'd be a ratings winner. Oh, my God. And who's he going to be in the Ashburton Courthouse on on, mon- in, uh, in on Monday with? Yeah. You know? Like, there's going to be so many weirdos. And you'll be the only... Like, I, I 
thanks to my husband, seen a few courthouses, and <laughs> it's amazing to see how many people just turn up in the rangiest clothes instead yeah. of like turning up in suits. So he'll come in this really nice suit, and then there'll be all these people there in their gumboots, like, get on, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Do you fly in your as as Hollywood Chris Pine? Do you fly in your um your big wig lawyer all the way from Hollywood to oh, represent you? He'll get di- he'll probably get diversion anyway. You can't, gr- no, you can't get diversion for drink driving. Yeah. What's he get? Sorry, guys, that was just my computer. It yeah. would be great if he had like the local Kiwi lawyer. Eh? He's like, how are you? You're from the movies, are you? Good on you. Well, that's not going to work here in Ashburton. Yeah. All right, yeah. here's what you got to do. You got to. You gotta slip me a fifty for a start, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll talk about the old uh, lawyering stuff. All right? Yeah. You saw what happened to Bloody Paris or Lindsay Lohan? They got to jail for three days. Not happening here, mate. We're gonna make an example of you. <laughs> the sequel to Z for Zachariah, D for DUI. <laughs> <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. Uh, the shark bus has become our new obsession. Whoa! It's what we want. Give it more. Give it more of an intro than just Sorry. the shark bus. Okay, hang on, hang on. Okay, I've let's on. hang on. No, we're getting it in a harmony. You ready? I'll start from the bottom. You guys join and we'll go around the room. There is a bus. Oh, okay. We'll do you one. That exists in the city of Auckland. That is shaped like a shark. It's called... Shark Shark Bus. Bus. We fell in love in a shark bus place. Shark Bus. We fell in love in a shark bus place. Shark Bus. You're not harmonising with the Rihanna song that I was doing. So we want to get this bus with our newly found show budget. Our boss told us we've got $1,000 to spend every month. And this month we've decided what better to spend it on than getting the bus and what going speed dating on it. Well, we we even decided, we'll throw that out to the listeners when we get close to the time, whether we go speed dating or whether we take already established couples on the date. It's still very blurry, Clint. All we know is that we really want a bus that looks like a shark. We've put our um, man in charge of the show, Chang Hung, in charge of getting the bus. I know, why did you leave me in charge with this? (laughs) Admin babs. Have you screwed up again? No, no, no. So um, I sent an email. Um, yeah, last time we asked you, you said I sent an email. Yeah, I sent an email and it got passed around. And finally it came came back to me with a reply. Oh, okay. yes, yes. From a lovely lady called Claire. Okay, drum roll, please. Okay. This is, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Oh, don't read the, the whole chain, mate. Just read the results. Okay, the results is, we can have the bus. Oh, yeah! Yeah! Oh, bus! 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 Bus, shark, bus, shark, bus, shark, bus. Chang, are there any the are there any important conditions we need to know about? Well, due to our licensing and restrictions, we are restricted to a certain route, and we will provide a driver for you guys. They'll give us yes! a driver. Yes. Ain't this nobody is a got driver. problems with it. So we just have to decide. Great job. We just have to decide what dates it is. Uh, we want to do it. We'll pass it on to Kelly yep. Townsend. Yep. And we need to get yep. a way for people to let us know they want to be on the bus because we need to get a fair representation of everybody who listens to the show all over the country. We've to come got to on make some cool like, invites, like li- shaped like little sharkies. Yes, and have chocolate. Um, chocolate sharks. fish. Is, chocolate it inter- sharks. is it inappropriate to take the people on the date on the shark bus to get fish and chips? No, oh, very good, good point. Mm. If it's on route. If you want to be on the shark bus, you can tell us about it now if you like on our Facebook page, Guy Sharon and Clint. I would also like to track down, there was a New Zealand man that uh, had this blog that went viral in New Zealand about trying to get a date, on the, to take a date on the shark bus. I'd love to track him down and, and get him to be on the bus. Get him to come, okay. If it's his dream, then we want to make that dream a reality as we want to make you and New Zealand's shark bus follow, dreams a reality. Follow the journey and let us know if you want to come on the shark bus. Guy Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Hi, I love you, and I bought you this sweet treadmill. I hate you, and I'm leaving you. What am I doing wrong? Shares Dogs Love Shack. Love. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Love Shack with Sharon, our resident love expert. Hello. Um, Dolly's out the information that can help you with your love problems. We're getting some juicy as... Hang uh, on, hang on, your mic's right. on yeah, now, that's my bad. There you go. We're getting some uh, juicy as texts on the text machine. Sharon, this is probably almost too big to talk about on the radio, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. Right. Hey, Sharon. What's the best way to leave my partner? I have kids to him, but I don't feel the love anymore. It's family that will be really angry if I was to leave him. Also, I've met another guy. What do I do? Oh, well, this is a hard one for me because I've never worked, uh, lived in, in like a separated family or anything like that. But from what my friends whose parents have been through that, they always said that if your parents aren't happy, your kids aren't going to be happy. So if yeah. you're, if you're couple, as a couple, you're unhappy, then it's going to end up going on to your kids as well. So you just need to grow a pair, sit down, talk about it, and just break up with them because then 
in the long run, everyone's going to be happier. Yeah. Do and, you if think the, and the family may be mad at you, but whatever, they'll get over it eventually. I think you should also write down what you don't like about the relationship and talk that through first. Yeah, especially because if you've already met somebody else, it could just be the fact that you've met this other person that it's a typical grass is always greener yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. might not actually, you might end up ruining your amazing family to be with some guy that just made you feel special when you wanted some attention. So definitely, maybe even go and see like a relationship counsellor and weigh it all up before you make a decision. Good advice, Shaz Dog. All right, Richard has been waiting patiently. Welcome to the Love Shack, Richard. How may I be of service today? Yeah, good afternoon. Hey, long time. This is the first time caller. Oh, hey. thank you. <laughs> good to have you. Hey, look, um, I've got a, a sensitive issue. I've, I've been a had a partner for about seven years. We're a mature couple. Um, you know, I'm quite fit and active. She's fabulous, but over the period, she she has gained a lot of weight. And right. I've tried to approach the subject, and and given the odd gift of you know you know six months at a gym, etc. Oh, no. But yep. nothing sort of you know nothing sort of eventuated. It? But it, it is getting to the stage now where it, it's a slight puff. It's almost lights out every time. Mm. And it's, I don't know how to approach the subject without because you know I, I don't want to destroy the ego. I don't want to you know make any anything bad, but. I you understand know. where you're coming from, Richard. At first, I thought that you were my husband ringing up with a fake name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Well, actually, he told me to call, but... Um... Oh, damn him. Do you know what? The best thing is, because I I've, I will openly admit, when I was working on Judge and Mike and Dom's show, I put on 18 kgs. Wow. And I put on a lot of weight. I, and on our wedding day, I was the biggest I'd ever been. And the one thing that I always just wanted my husband to say, instead of kind of giving me hints that I need to go to the gym more often, I would have loved for him to say, hey, should we go and do this boot camp together, it can be something we can do together. So instead of it sounding like, you know, you think the other person is fat or whatever, it's a challenge that you guys can both do together, you get to spend time together, and you both get hot together. Just, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, just go and do something together instead of her doing it by herself because then she feels alienated and like that you always think that she's ugly or whatever. Oh, I don't think she's ugly. No. Exactly. So just go and do something together. Either that or the old adage of if you can't beat him, join him. Just get fat too, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your call, man. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I love you, and I bought you this sweet treadmill. I hate you, and I'm leaving you. What am I doing wrong? Shares Dogs Love Shack. Love. Hey, Amanda, how can we help you out today? Hey, I've been with my partner for two years, and he's still married to the woman that he was married to for ten. Oh. Uh-oh. So well, let me get this straight. Is he still in a relationship with the with the person he's married to and you're in a fear, or is he separated from her and seeing you? Um, they're separated. She lives in Australia, but he won't sign the papers because he could lose a lot of money. Mm. Ah, and why do you why are you so desperate for him to sign the papers? Do you want to get married yourself? I do, but it's I know it's just a piece of paper, but at the end of the day, he shouldn't be married if he wants to be in a long-term relationship. This is true. How, how much money would he lose in this situation? Would it make you guys financially unstable? He would lose over $80,000. Oh. oh! Amanda, I really, really hate to say this because I know it is just a piece of paper, but $80,000 is a hell of a lot of money to lose if you guys aren't going to be getting married or anything because it doesn't change how he feels about you. He's just trying to p- protect your guys' future. That, that is true, and I've thought about that as well, but when I want to get married to him and you know settle down and have kids and stuff, I think that you should just kind of... I I agree with you on that one, but I reckon that you should definitely sit down and talk to him about it and see if he's willing to budge on it at all. And if not, just find out where your future is going because if he's thinking that he's never going to get married again and you're hoping to get married, that may be a conversation you guys need to have now. Yeah, definitely. I like that. (laughs) Yeah, Sorry that we're not too much of a help, but I do hope it works out for you, Amanda. That is all right. You're not counsellors. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. Well, we're bloody trying to be a man. I thought I was a counsellor. <laughs> hey, we've got some. We've got some uh, classic texts that might alleviate, lighten the mood a little bit because we've had some real serious ones. Yeah. Here's some crappy ones. Hey Shazza, oh, that's my miss. This is crappy. Hey Shazza, my missus cooks every night, which I'm grateful for, but it's rubbish. Oh, <laughs> clearly not grateful uh. for it. Don't want to hurt her feelings and tell her any advice, cuz. Oh, I, I don't know how you approach it because this is the reason that I don't cook at home. It's because I used to hate when my dad would criticise my mum's cooking, so I just don't put myself in the situation. Yeah. But you could always, as like a gift or whatever, 
buyers and cooking lessons. What is this crap? I've got the solution. Screw you, Shazza. I'm taking over. You cook yourself, mate. If, if you don't like <laughs> the cooking... Your, you could cook for yourself, but if you don't want to cook for her don't and you don't want to complain. cook every night, get her some cooking lessons. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. So the main reason I... Um, Got a job here. Wanted a job here at the Edge Radio Network station. station. Both um, Galaxy. Yeah, that will do. Corporation is because not just because of the sweet free to CDs they, that they give us. Even though I don't have a CD player on my computer, so I can't do anything with it and just have to illegally download things. <laughs> the main reason I joined here was because I heard the Edge had Nando's cards. Uh. They really? had they had these cards. Are you really going to bring this Did up? Did you have one, Clint? Yeah, I had one. They had these cards. I had one, but I never used it. It was like an unlimited Nando's card. Where you could go to Nando's and swipe the card, uh. and your purchase would cost zero dollars and zero cents. This is a real sore point you're touching on. Now, since I've come here, I've been told that the Nando's cards are no longer a thing. And I've been told the reason they're no longer a thing is because of the host of the night show... From Marty and Steph, Marty, <laughs> welcome to the studio. You're not getting a clap. Where the hell did it all go wrong, mate? Well, th- thanks for the slow clap. Appreciate that. No, well, no. To be fair, I just come off being an intern, and I didn't have that much money. You know, you know how Leon runs the ship around here. Yeah. And then so we got these cards, and I may have abused the the, the relationship. I heard every night you went to Nando's. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes. No, it was. Yes. No, it was probably maybe like two times, three times a week. Even more than that you is what I've heard. You only worked four days a week at that time. From multiple sources, <laughs> both you and your co-host at the time will get a huge feast, enough to last you the next day. Yeah, we would get like the half chicken. So it escalates. <laughs> it escalates, okay. Nando's Ponsonby, is that where you went? Yeah, it is. Nando's yeah. Ponsonby no longer exists. Wow. You ate them out of business. <laughs> Have you, did you not even know that? Have you not gone back to check? No, well, because... They didn't get the free card. It was yeah. my favourite chicken place. I was going to go pay full price. So oh, that was my it. goodness. Yeah, you, well, I did ruin it for everybody. You, I just cannot believe this. I can't believe people are not more shocked. I know, we, there we there is always that one person in your workplace, though, that ruins it for everybody. Oh. So you're probably listening right now going, oh, bloody filled it that with our, our 20% off sushi or whatever your thing was. We, I, I never even got to use my card. It's and cold. The Rock got it as well, and they were still allowed to use it for a good couple of months after us. It's because cold. they had self-control. And then what I actually ended up doing is I asked them to get me some Nando's so they added that to the order, and then they got theirs revoked as well. So. <laughs> oh, Marty! <laughs> Marty, right now I'd like to you to apologise, um, not so much to me, but to Nando's Ponsonby and to New Zealand for ruining the greatest <laughs> thing that ever happened to the world. I'm sorry, Nando's, your peri-peri chicken was just that good that I needed it every day. So, <laughs> alas, you know, the addiction you got the You don't even seem sorry, you're a prick. Guy, Sharon and Clint, itch. I have had quite the day. <laughs> quite the day. And I went this morning to do some errands with my friend Nadia, who's getting married soon, and we were just doing some wedding stuff. And then I was racing back to work, and I was like, Shaz Dog, you've killed it. You've got time to go to your favorite cafe and get a wee wrap on the way home. Yum. And, and I was like, yes, do that. So I was driving down Ponsonby Road, and you never, ever get a p- car park on Ponsonby Road, ever, when you're me, anyway. And right During outside, day, no right outside, my favorite cafe was a car park. And I was like... Booyah! This is your day! This is your day! And I started pulling out. I was real excited. Was Things like, are turning up good for old Chaz dog. I was like reversing back, like thinking to myself, yeah, this is so easy. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I hear this massive bang, crunch, and I get kind of thrust forward, like, oh, God. And I was like, Chaz dog, I think you've crashed into a car <laughs> on Ponsonby Road. I was like, please don't be an expensive car. Please don't be an expensive <sighs> car. It get would out. be at Ponsonby Road. It was a brand new Porsche. Hey. A brand new Porsche hit by a 2001 Suzuki Swift. <laughs> you had one of those situations that everybody uses as the case point for why you need to get insurance. Like, my car's not worth anything. Yes, but what if you crash into a Porsche? It was the worst. So I get out of the car, notice everyone staring at me because it was really, really loud. Yeah. Walk around, I like, get a pen and a piece of paper out, and I was going to write a note to leave my details. Then contemplated just writing, pretending to write a note so I could drive off, but I knew that I'd never be able to sleep again. <laughs> um, and I was looking at it, and I was like, I'm sure I hit this Porsche. Like, I got thrown forward in my car. Looking at the back of my car, no mark on it. Looking on the front of the porch, 
no mark on it, no dent. I'm baffled. I'm standing there. People are staring at me. And I walked over to this guy at the at the cafe and I said, I might be going crazy, but did I just did I just drive into the back of that? <laughs> did I just back into that Porsche or did I hit the rubbish bin? He goes, bro, you totally hit that car. He's like, don't try to get out of it. And I was like. No, did I? Because it doesn't look like I have. And and then I asked him to come have a look at it because I thought my eyes were like playing tricks on me. I had somehow backed into a car that startled everyone around because it was so loud and did not leave one scratch, one dent God on this brand is real. new Porsche. Wow! I Hail believe to Jesus! It. And then I, I thought to myself, <laughs> "This is the best day ever." And I went into the into the cafe. Didn't have my wrap. So if I'd gone, if I had hurt the car, I would have pulled over for bloody nothing. Oh, there's no wraps available. But I just couldn't believe that I backed into this ridiculously expensive Porsche and there was no evidence whatsoever that it had been hit. That's, that it you dodged like a bullet, babes. One of the luckiest escapes ever. You got away. You got away scot free. And even all the people around me were just like, "How does that have no mark on it?" Because that was so loud. Wow. <laughs> These lucky escapes are great stories, though, because it goes from being the worst situation to the best situation just like that. I and feel all of a like you feel great about. I feel like there the needs to be a word for these things where you dodge a bullet. Yeah, maybe and it's, it's like, like you know, when you lose your wallet, and then and then a, a day later you find it, and it's like the best day of your life, and you do a little dance. Yes, there's a there's that satisfaction that is created by nothing, right? Just something not being as bad as you thought it was. What? I honestly thought I had gone halfway into the bonnet. Let's see if there's any of these stories out there as well. Have you had that situation? Maybe it wasn't with a car. Maybe it was something completely different. But you had one of the luckiest escapes of your life. You can call us on 0800 the Edge and text us at three three four three. We've got some DVDs to give away. We've got Jamae Private School Girl up for grabs. I must have DVD this. Week. Week, but the time you got off, and um, extremely luckily, a lucky escape. Oh, eight hundred the edge. There's some guy out there with internal damage to his Porsche right now that you just can't Shut see on the outside. Up. Eh? That is not even funny. It well, wasn't me. My bad. Simon, tell us about your lucky escape. Uh, I went on on a road trip with some mates. Our first night, we went to the casino. Mm-hmm. I put everything I had with me on the table, lost it all but ten dollars, and then won it all <laughs> back and left with the exact same amount I went oh. with. So Simon. your matrixing moment is a victorious gambling story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were there for eight hours. It felt like about an hour and a half. Oh, we I, and it was, and it was afternoon. The I, next am, day. I am so glad that you got that money back, Simon. <laughs> Amy, tell us about your lucky escape. Uh, well, my lucky escape. I was driving just as you do, having a casual drive to fielding and passing north. <laughs> as you do. <laughs> and, uh, a guy, a crazy driver who was really tired and just finished work, smashed into the back of my car going 170 k. 170? Yeah, 170. <laughs> wow. And then I flew across to the other side of the road, so luckily there was no cars coming the other way, otherwise oh. they would have smashed into me. And so while I was embracing my steering wheel and closing my eyes, I opened them and I was one centimetre away from smashing face first into a concrete fence. Oh, oh God, Amy. <laughs> You're lucky to be alive, mate. Buy a yeah. lot of ticket. Super lucky. Yeah, all right. That is amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Alicia, what about you? Hi. What was your lucky escape? Um, I managed to drive into the back of a cop car at an intersection. <laughs> yep. The worst not, nightmare. Not my finest moment. No. no. Um, with some damage and he had to call his superior who came and told me off and everything like that told me they were going to send me the ticket in the mail and I never got the ticket yes Alicia we must ask did you have great cleavage on this day well normally I do but that day I didn't so it must have just been my natural charm must have remembered you from last time you were a low cut top some serious (laughs) matrixing thanks mate I worked on a dairy farm. This is from the text machine, which is blowing up. This is great. I worked on a dairy farm, and one day I got pushed to the ground and trampled by 320 cows. I stood up and walked away with only a few bruises. Amazing. Lucky man. I was at my mate's place. I dropped uh, my brand new iPhone 5 off the roof, went down and checked it. Only had a one tiny scratch on it. That's amazing. Yeah, because those things break you so just, easily. And you just think instantly like how much that costs. A thousand dollars. There it goes. Yeah, yeah. This is gone. My mate was sleeping with a girl. No, I'm going to cut that one out right yeah, there. Cut that one out. Cut that one out. <laughs> Back to the phone. One, one more phone call. <laughs> Matthew, tell us about your lucky escape. Um, hey, Chef Dog. Um, I was going to pick Mum and Dad up from the airport like real early, about five or six o'clock. They were flying in from an overseas holiday. Mm-hmm. And I hit some black ice doing about 70 or 80k, which isn't that fast. <laughs> but I hit a, I hit a big stone 
concrete and stone mailbox. It was about a metre high. Oh, yeah. Oh. And so I, I wrote the car off, but the front wheel on the passenger side, you know, the front left corner, yeah. got hit so hard it was forced up under the front seat. So oh. the whole car was crunched up. Yeah. My wife at the time was eight months pregnant and she was going to come up with me but she wasn't that well and we thought, Oh no, it'd be it'd be too tricky. Look, you stay at home, I'll go and get mum and dad. So and had she been sitting in the passenger seat, I would have lost both my wife and my unborn son. Oh, my God. Whoa. That's incredible. That is a lucky, lucky escape. Matt, were you injured in the car accident? No. no I had a wee bit of a sore neck. Wow, well, Matt. That, that is a very, very lucky escape and definitely a great reason for your parents to always get a taxi from the airport from now on. <laughs> they, they were a bit sad. was a bit dark. He said, oh. Why were you so late? And I said, oh, I'm really sorry. I crashed your car. And he was like, oh, whatever. And I was like, uh, yeah, that's why I've got the farm truck. Yeah. Oh, and God. Like, oh, no. Well, thank you so much for your call, Matt. And uh, drive more slowly next time in that black ice, no. all right? Thanks. Guess what? Guess what? what? Well, I'm a courier, and I have near misses every day. Oh, oh. Matt. Get off the phone. Get off the phone, Matt. Oh, God. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. The edge which is the building that we are contained in right now, as well as the radio station that you can hear in your car at the moment. The Edge um, Corporation is what I call it. Yeah. Um, the Edge HQ. It's Keep it edgy is our slogan. <laughs> Living on the edge. Welcome it- to 2001. <laughs> it stinks here today. It now, when absolutely you, reeks. When, when you brought this up earlier... I actually had that moment where I thought, oh my God, does he know my secret? Because I've taken my shoes off today in the studio, <laughs> and I thought I'd gotten away with it. And when you brought that up, I was like, oh no, I'm getting cold out live on air. Luckily, you're talking about something else. No. So, no, and we're also used to your sweaty ball smells. So it's fine. No, 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 no. <laughs> but you know no, no. what I mean. You were too into my crotch. You, you, this is the second well, thing you're talking about. you pointed at me every day for four hours. I'm going to look at it a couple of times. We can have sex after the show, Sharon, but right now it's business time. Time. People will be aware of this. You know when someone at your work brings like a um, like some fish from dinner um, last night as leftovers for lunch and they microwave and it stinks or someone's really eat, into eating tuna in the middle of the office? That's trouble. Someone who works um, in our building... Who we hope can hear this in the bathroom right now. Yeah. Um, they had crayfish... Sent to work in the post. <laughs> stop, bra- <laughs> stop bragging about it. First of all, that you can afford crayfish. Yeah, it's like getting your really expensive online um, clothes purchases shit sent to work. Except yeah. they got crayfish. Who put seafood in the mail? Who's mailing seafood? Dial a cray dot com. <laughs> it actually seems like such a terrible business idea. Was it in a watery tank where the crayfish is still alive, flapping no. around in there? No. The weird bit about this is the crayfish that arrived. Dead um, crayfish. It was dead crayfish. The crayfish was. Is it a walk here? The, <laughs> no, I thought it was in a watery tank. Do you think no, it no, got no, 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 ridden no. here by a sea snail? No, I th- thought it was in a watery tank. <laughs> the, cra- the crayfish, the crayfish that arrived today, was supposed to arrive at Christmas. Is it that old? The- yeah. <laughs> so it was expired. Yeah, and so because of that, the elevator smells like Wait. old crayfish. Reception smells like old crayfish. I think the dude who ordered it kept it as well and put it in the fridge because the kitchen smells like old crayfish. This place, it stinks. It stinks like crab mold. It stinks like ne- how, Neptune's nether regions. How did it get messed up that bad? How did it get messed up that bad that it got sent uh, that late? Like after Christmas, that's unacceptable. I don't know. The logistics of the situation are, are beyond me. All I know is the stink that you can smell at work today and you're lucky it And our listeners at home can hear through the through the microphone. You know what I think? In our voice. It's crayfish. The smell is crayfish. I think this is just a story that Clint spun to just get away with the fact he didn't shower after the gym and came to work this morning. <laughs> <laughs> An elaborate that's ploy. What, that's what I'm thinking. Well played, Clinton. Clint- uh, we fell for it. Ha ha, you funny chap. <laughs> Clint, have you been to the gym? You smell like old crayfish. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, why do you smell like fish? Guy, Sharon and Clint. Edge. Can we talk for a second about this um, missing airplane? No. It's quite a heavy subject, but I feel like it needs to be addressed because it's a thing that everyone is talking about right now. Flight 370. We don't want to get too much into the uh, kind of like tabloid... uh, hysteria that's swirling around it but it does raise a lot of interesting questions isn't it incredible that in 2014 a plane 
can disappear off the face of the earth, presumably. Like, it hasn't, but it yeah. feels like it has. It's been missing since Saturday, and we still have no idea where this plane is. And, of course, it starts up the loonies who um, who start saying things like, oh, is another country involved? Is it a terrorist plot? Has it exploded? Has it been kidnapped? Well, exploded is not a, um, a loony prospect. It could have uh, could have exploded and disintegrated if there was a bomb on the plane. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I guess that's a proper, a so proper option. There's two really weird things that have come about in the last couple of days there was a news story going around and I don't I don't know the validity of this fact so I don't really maybe I shouldn't share it but there was a news story going around yesterday about how the phones of the people on the plane were still ringing like you could call the phone but no one would answer whereas if the, pl- the phones were underwater surely she should go straight to voicemail um, that's true that one is speculation but a story that did come out today is that um, the pilot one of the co-pilots of the plane um, has a history of taking girls into the cockpit and being like do you want to come in right up the front with me do you want to come and these girls the have, cockpit yeah the girl, these girls have shared all the photos with the co-pilot so that's <laughs> weird that's being called into question but no one knows where this plane is yeah it's one of those things where it's 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 a movie come to life like you cannot believe this would happen it's lost it's it's your, it's your I'm a nervous flight and it is literally oh. uh, something that makes me really nervous now. If if you had a fear of flying before this, yeah. would, you wouldn't be able to get on a flight kind so, of thing. So, so that was the thing, though. So w- this news broke for me um, late Saturday night is when I first saw it mm. on the interwebs. Mm. And Sunday morning, I was on a flight back from Wellington with none other than drunken Clint, <laughs> who was still up from karaoke the night before, okay. <laughs> having a great time. No, yeah. he no, 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 no. I wasn't worried about you crashing the plane but it wasn't chilling me out that much that you were like complaining loudly about your plane um your seat not being able to so i'm there really stressed out about a plane crash that's just happened yeah and i'm on a plane and clint's just really angry that the hostess won't let him um recline his seat two inches for takeoff (laughs) he's like it's not gonna affect the plane at all and i'm like this is probably what the people said previously you know it's famous last words i now do everything every stupid thing they want when they want the um the, the window, window shutter up. put up yeah what how does that affect the plane nobody knows but i want that now because i'm such a nervous flyer yeah it's an incredible story and it's just still a story that's unfolding we've seen an um, air force plane over to help with the search and just hopefully there'll be some news come out of it so i really hope there's some closure because yeah. i hate how these things just drag on forever malin mccann style yeah okay guy Sharon and clint itch chang's here Chang, you've got something a bit important today, mate. Oh, apparently very important. Had to be reminded by my lovely mother. It's my old man dad's birthday today. Oh, happy birthday. Your old birthday. man dad. Yeah, he's around 63, 64, Chang, I think. Yeah. In English, we say one or the other. We say it's my old man's birthday or okay. it's my dad's birthday. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just go along with that. <laughs> my old man dad. So I, I, seriously, I totally forgot. I like. I, I had no idea that it was his birthday today. Dad, let's, son. let's make it up to him by now by sharing with him a, um, a beautiful birthday wish over the airwaves. Just no, you, Chang. Sing him happy birthday. Yeah, just you. You don't have to sing it. Just say Three, a special no, message. Two. Happy birthday, dad. No. No, <laughs> sing it. Sing your dad happy birthday. Sing it. really have to. Yes. It's just you. Oh, okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to my dad. Happy birthday to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. very poor, to say the least. So your mum reminded you, obviously, because she needed you to take everyone out for dinner tonight. Yes, so I had to make plans right on the spot. <laughs> After that phone call, I was like, holy crap, where are we going? Yes, yep. Ch- Chang is the man of the house and his family. Mm. Um, did you, you booked a table for six at BK? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I tried to suggest like some really nice, well-priced restaurants, and he goes, oh, no. Oh no, we we must go all you can eat. We yeah. only got all you can eat. I was like Valentine's. Because you, <laughs> you have to think about it. My brother is a big eater, and so my my mum and dad are big eaters. So buffets are the my best. My dad's thing. the same. He yeah. won't go anywhere that's not a buffet. Well, why don't you take them out. to Valentine's? It's his birthday, so you get one of the meals for free. Nah, we're, we're going to a uh, Japanese and Korean barbecue. All you can eat. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, I'm going to show up there as well and just awkwardly <laughs> come part of your party. <laughs> um, weird that you forgot his birthday, though. Do you think he will be upset that you forgot his I birthday? I think he would be. If mum didn't remind me... Yeah, it's a pretty big one. Yeah. He's almost uh, close to retirement. Can anyone out there top that? Retired? He doesn't even work, does he? Well, 65 at the retirement age. Oh, right. (laughs) He's almost eligible for some some retirement money. Can anyone top that? Has anyone forgotten something worse than their dad's birthday? Oh, shit. I don't think I can. Am I that bad of a son? Yeah, maybe. (laughs) I don't don't think I can, but if you think you can, then go nuts. We have Hannah on the phone. What did you forget, Hannah? Um, I forget me and my boyfriend's little like anniversary date every single time. Ah, are you uh, talking about a yearly or does he make you do monthly and well, like first kiss and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, you know like normally it's the girl that makes it a big deal but he's older than me and he 
every month, like he likes to celebrate it a little bit. Once a month. Every month. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, don't feel bad about that. God, that must get annoying. Yeah, but that's why I forget it, because... It's so hard to remember every month. Yeah, you, you've got one like every four weeks. I get annoyed when people say oh, like, anniversary like, for like for a girl, month but. for a monthly thing. Because isn't the definition of anniversary annual? Yeah, good point. That yeah. doesn't um, that definitely doesn't uh, top uh, Chang's for getting his nah, dad's birthday this it year. Doesn't yeah. Someone texts in saying their dad has forgotten uh, their birthday eight years in a row. <laughs> I hate to say it, but... Eight years in a row. I don't think your dad is trying that hard. Hey! <laughs> oh, is it you? No, it's not me. <laughs> oh, my saying? dad is impossible to forget my birthday. My birthday's on Christmas Eve. I'm already at his house. <laughs> You're always telling him about it. Yeah. All right, on the phone. All right, Becca, I don't think it gets any worse than your story. Tell us what you forgot. I forgot to show up to my dad's wedding. Oh. What? How did you forget to show up to your dad's wedding? In all fairness, I didn't really like the lady he was marrying. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, when I did, when did... out the night before and forgot about it. And just, yeah, I got to woke up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon to a whole lot of texts. Oh. Yep. Oh, were you supposed to have an important role in the wedding? No, no. Oh, feel. <laughs> is he still? That's how much the fiance also didn't like me, so it's okay. <laughs> is it? Is it? Is he still married? He is, but hopefully not happily. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. oh no, you didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> hey, hey go, yeah. Hold the line, Becca, because you've definitely won uh, the biggest forgetful thing. I just made that Thank up. You. Wait, yeah. <laughs> do we send out the biggest forgetful thing, or do you come and pick? It's that a up? common oh, prize. I, the biggest I, forgetful thing. Yeah, it's a, it's this real big thing, and people <laughs> always forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't realize they. <laughs> Shut up! It's a prize. It's a great prize. Guys, Sharon and Clint on the edge. There you go. That was the podcast. Thank you for joining us. Um, and thank you for sticking around. If you, like me, have been waiting for the answer to the burning question of why do you have to put your seat back upright when you're um, coming in to land on a plane? Why can't I leave my seat back down? From Air and Space Magazine, airspacemag.com. There are two... Ma- Wait, Air and Space. Are they also covering planes that go like NASA rockets? <laughs> Maybe anyway, they are. Less, anyway, less and less, I think. They must be a very small um, small audience for that magazine. There are two main reasons why flight attendants pester people to keep those seats up. One, to keep injuries to a minimum during a crash. Mm-hmm. And two, to clear the maximum amount of space for a quick exit if there is an emergency. Which is a really great idea. If you don't get woken up, don't put your seat back. One other thing from the show that I wanted to just bring up briefly, we had someone trying to top um, Chang's story about forgetting his dad's uh, birthday. Someone texted in after we'd finished the phoner and said, I forgot my granddad's funeral two weeks ago. Oh my God. I was doing a poem as well. I think that is the winner. You that don't get terrible. another shot at Granddad's funeral. Yeah, what a sad guy. Sorry to finish on that sad <laughs> note. Hey, should we have finished on a happy note? Don't sing that if song. If you're singing that song, uh, you are arrested. No. no I'm going to go get a gun. I'm going West to get a gun. West Philadelphia, border okay. red. The Guy Shannon and Clint Podcast.